Hello friends, welcome to day one of LS Pre Post training and I will just give you a glimpse of what are the things which we are going to cover and how it is going to get proceed further. Okay, so I will be using extensively a platform called Teachable. Okay, there you will get courses and you have to join one course that is LS Pre Post training. That particular course, course will have a lot of chapters those chapters you have to fill that means you have to actually go through the chapters go through the assignments and i will get your progress okay so here we are supposed to learn something we are not here to just waste some time or play some games okay make sure you are finishing it make sure you are doing the uh, assignments on time as i said in the earlier video on telegram you are supposed to only make sure you are finishing the assignments on the same day fine so uh, let's go through the content uh, let me share my screen and uh, we will discuss about ls pre post in detail so here is the ls pre post screen you can just simply open it it will be there in your start menu if you just type in ls pre post you can actually see this right now what are you supposed to do once you open ls pre post we will be starting with pre-processing part using ls pre post and the next session or next section will be post-processing part using ls pre post but before even we start with pre-processing the first ever session day one session which will be lighter is going to be a complete overview of a graphical user interface so here i'm assuming no one of you is aware about ls pre post so just come blank slate don't be uh, prejudiced with what you know about ls pre post just be blank state make sure you are listening to me carefully make sure you are actually going deep into the understanding of ls pre post and then we will proceed further so let's start guys this is an introductory session just 10 15 minutes and i will be giving a lot of assignments today uh, after these 10 15 minutes but from tomorrow that is 4th of august the situation will be different and you will have from day two it will be much much detailed okay so let's go ahead and discuss about graphical user interface very clear very straightforward uh, you have simple drop down menus so this is called as drop down menu because they drop down simple and then you have graphical toolbars okay so these are the toolbars this is one toolbar which is at bottom and then you have another toolbar which is at the side the side toolbar keeps on changing as you select various options okay so as you select various options you are going to get some different options on the other side okay so here you have solid surface curves geometry post etc etc don't worry we will be going through it in detail uh if you go to file you have various things which you can import now because we are going to start with pre-processing we are supposed to first discuss about what we are supposed to discuss about geometry so let's start understanding what is geometry and here if you go for file you get open option and here you are going to get options which are related to uh, sorry guys file open and then you have options related to igs and step iges and step these are the two formats so first assignment guys get long forms or get complete uh, definition of what is iges it it has a meaning and get definition of step and just post it on telegram group or you may uh, go for teachable and just write down comment below okay and then of course you are you are supposed to open ideas files so universal files you can open ideas nobody uses now uh, you can open some other files also di9 files and all xy data all these things uh, but right now we are concentrating only on these two things which is an igs file and step file okay so we can open an igs file we can open a step file this you have to do so you can open it later it's very simple regular menu you uh, all know how, how to open files now when you go to open there are some other files which you can open as we saw right now is binary plot which is for post-processing 
a keyword file which is for either pre-processing or post-processing and then we have this keyword a plus d3 plot combination fine so uh, guys let me be very clear let me stop sharing screen again and let me be very clear what what are the things which we are not going to cover okay the first important part be very careful make sure you are using all the legal data for any kind of pre-processing or even for post-processing okay so the legal data is something which you are supposed to use that is one part the next part is ls pre-post is free for all so you can install any instances you want you wish to and they are going to give you a lot of results they are going to give you a lot of insights okay now uh, the important aspect here is yeah so the important aspect here is uh, you are supposed to uh, create some files ijs files step files but at the same time you are supposed to process some ijs and step files so i will uh, re prefer grabcad for any kind of file import step or ijs so grabcad is a good platform because it is typically uh, not having any confidential data it is like a freelancers working on that data so you can just use grabcad uh, but at the same time you can create your own files or you can ask your uh, designer friends uh, to generate some files and get them out okay so the uh, intention for this training is to give you an idea about what is a preprocessor what is a post processor we are skipping solver this is not a solver training we are skipping preprocessor like hypermesh which is a high end tool which is for complex parts this is simply for uh, the basic parts as far as meshing is concerned but for connectivity and for other stuff you can still use ls prepost we also use it in our organization okay the next important part uh, which we are going to cover is uh, complete model building okay so we will try to build model that is how to uh, how to create bolts how to create uh, spiders and how to create uh, welding that is what we are going to cover so that will typically cover all the pre processing part the next important thing is uh, the post processing which is extremely important for ls prepost to understand or for us to understand in ls prepost uh, which is uh, which is about how to check the results how what are the what is the importance of result checking that is something which we are going to do okay so uh, uh, let's start with uh, uh, model building basics that is geometry creation okay so let me share screen again and this is now related to model building so if you go to geometry you will get four or five options so there are reference geometries so just right now just forget about it you are not going to create any reference planes or any reference axis just work on global it's simple for us you can generate curves point line etc etc you can generate surfaces you can generate solids you can generate other geometry tools we are you can use other geometry tools then you have fem okay so the next part we will understand is finite element method what are we going to do in fem so you can see various options model and part you can see various options elements and tools you can see various options so this is an exclusive pre processor and post processor only for ls dyna let me be very clear this is an exclusive pre and post processor for ls dyna only okay and then you are going to go for as you see our application occupant safety metal forming model checking all these things are there and then you have settings which are all related to this current sub subsystem working directory general setting all these settings are there color settings background settings how to export movie and all these things which are being controlled from the setting part and of course help is very important you can go for documentation you have to download it once and then you will actually get the complete user manual so this is some 4.5 but it's still okay the gui is uh, pretty much the same if you go to tutorial you get all the tutorials as well but guys before you finish this training don't go through tutor tutorials because you will get confused there are few things which are not really important so we'll keep focused and then of course you can go and search for tutorials and uh, look into it for references then you have old to new so this was an old type of uh, uh, interface so if you press control f11 or f11 function f11 so i am on a laptop that's why 
I need to press function. Okay, so now, uh, yes, guys, a very good news for all the users. The old GUI is not supported anymore. That means the old GUI is only supported till 4.7 point some version or 4.6. I am very happy. I never liked old GUI. So it's now getting very, very streamlined and it is all going to be just this graphical user interface. So I'm extremely happy. This was new to me, but now I'm getting a very, very good thing. Okay. So here you can go for old to new and still you can refer old and new GUI. It's very, very simple to refer, but you, I, I know your generation will not need it. We started with an old GUI back in 2005. It got propagated and it then got updated sub subsequently. Okay. And now here you can actually see, as I, as I told you, there are toolbars, there are toolbars, and this is the important window guys. So this window is a message window. You can see this. Okay. And this message window will give you all the information about what is happening with a specific command, which you want to execute. Okay. So this is a specific window and you can double click and open it. You can press control and zoom in, zoom out. If you find it a little difficult to read, you can zoom in and zoom out to check what is being written there. Okay. You can clear everything and you can actually close also. Okay. Is it fine guys? So let's see and change the colors now. So let me go to configuration setting. So settings, configuration settings, and here you can see the color. Background color, you can change to some value. Maybe let's say I want this one. And uh, I'll just click here. So you can see the background color block got changed to uh, uh, the gray one. And then you can define a custom color, of course. So you can go for little uh, faint side color, just white. Sometimes it becomes a little uh, harsh to see white backgrounds all time. So you can do that then you can actually uh, do few things here uh, which are related to background uh, uh, background of a complete window okay so you can actually change background of a complete uh, window also you can change text color to black or white and in color you can actually use this option can you see this guys so there is a checkered flag this checkered flag will change momentarily the background between white and black this will help you a lot here you will see an option which is for a triad and all these things so uh, there is a triad there is no triad all these things are possible here okay and then you have uh, various options which are on screen options so you can use them also we are going to go through every single detail don't worry i just wanted to ramp you up now what is task for you you can generate a solid here so just create try creating a cylinder like i'm doing right now so this is a task for you create a cylinder you can go to uh, an angle create a radius so you can give a radius of let's say so we'll go in millimeter values be very i will be very clear so let it be 100 millimeter radius your start angle is let's say zero and end angle let me make it 270 okay and then I will change this height. Okay, so the height uh, end position is three. Instead of that, I will make it 350. Okay, so you can fit. So I'm training you while uh, you are doing it. You can make use of a fit window. You can see these two arrows like this. You can click there and your window will get fitted. So essentially, you are generating a solid. Now, here is the tree this tree you are going to use. If, if you are doing mesh as well as geometry together, you can export this. So you can save as, save geometry as, and you can save this uh, particular thing. Let me save it here uh, in a new folder, LSPP training. And here I can save it as ST, STP, STIGS, or anything like that visibility curve and all these things don't do anything here units are in millimeter i will name it as partial cylinder okay so this is your first task so you have to save a partial cylinder geometry that is iges file or igs file clear up to this point guys and then you can just keep on or click on close 
So this way you can generate various geometries. So you can generate a box, you can generate a sphere, you can generate uh, uh, fillets. So let me try giving you a fillet option and uh, let me select a fillet on this edge and I will give a radius of let's say uh, 10 millimeters. Okay, can you see this guys? So it generated a fillet radius. I'll click on apply and you got you get a fillet here. Is it clear guys? So here you can generate another fillet, another fillet and I just click on apply and you can see a shape got converted to some other shape. It's kind of a cam. Okay, so this these are the assignments for today. Very simple assignments. Just try to create a, a partial cylinder and try to export it as an IGS file. So I can uh, show you file save or save as, save geometry as and I will save it as parcel cylinder again. It's the same file and I will save it. The file exists, I'll just overwrite. Okay, so that's all for today. I know it is a short video, but I really wanted it to start getting bigger and bigger from tomorrow. I want you to be conversant with LS Prepost as a whole and see you guys for tomorrow's session. This video will be uploaded on Teachable, as I said, and I will explain you in uh, in detail how it is going to work. Okay, so see you then, guys. Uh, have a great uh, day ahead. Make sure you are finishing these basic steps today.